All right. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and get started. And we are, <laughs> as Rick has noted, we, we skipped 12. We'll come back to 12 because apparently I can't count and um, I missed repentance. I, I, I don't, apparently I don't like repentance. I don't know. Uh, so we are going to look tonight at uh, Article 13 on the use of the sacraments. And this is, this is an interesting topic because it's one thing to talk about what the sacraments are and it's one thing to talk about what the sacraments um, do. But it's another thing to consider the use of them why it matters, why we do things the way we do, that kind of thing. So, um, let's see, there we go. Okay, so just to kind of review some of what's led up to where we are, we have Article 1, the beginning, God, the beginning and source of all creation, origi uh, original sin, Article 2, that's the problem. Uh, the Son of God comes to our aid to... Um, help with that problem, to be the, the solution to that problem. Article 4, we have the way in which we are made right with God, justification, and that is by faith in Jesus. And then we have Article 5, Jesus establishes the ministry for the sake of word and sacrament ministry to happen. So the office of holy ministry is established by Jesus so that his gifts can be given. Um, and by means of, the, of that, then people are brought into the church where we gather to receive the gifts through the word and the sacrament. Okay, so the saving work of Jesus on the cross by which we are justified is delivered to us through God's word and the sacraments. These are administered by men serving in the office of holy ministry, which Christ established for the sake of his church and to extend his kingdom. This will necessarily result in the new obedience of believers. Okay, so that brings us to Article 13, the use of the sacraments. Okay, so our churches teach that the sacraments were ordained not only to be marks of profession among men, but even more to be signs and testimonies of God's will toward us. They were instituted to awaken and confirm faith in those who use them. Therefore, we must use the sacraments in such a way that faith, which believes the promises offered and set forth through the sacraments, is increased. Therefore, they condemn those who teach that the sacraments justify simply by the act of doing them. They condemn those who do not teach that faith, which believes that sins are forgiven, is required in the use of the sacraments. Okay, so let's go back to that first part there. So our churches teach that the sacraments were ordained not only to be marks of profession among men, right? It's, that is part of it. That is part of it, right? What did we talk about with participation in the Lord's Supper? When you participate in a given altar, you are saying, I believe what this church believes. I'm one with them. Um, baptism uh, is, is a, uh, for a person who is an adult, has come to faith. They're going to be baptized. Is it an outward profession of faith? Well, in some ways, but that's a very small part of it, right? The primary thing is it is what God is now doing, right? Uh, because they are signs and testimonies of God's will toward us. Signs and testimonies of God's will toward us. That word signs, that always catches my attention because this is what John calls miracles in his gospel, right? In the gospel of John, he never calls them miracles. He always calls them signs. Uh, and so this, the first sign Jesus did at Cana of Galilee. And throughout his gospel, he does signs. Why? The signs point to something, don't they? They point to some greater thing. And so these sacraments are signs of what? God's will towards us. Signs of Christ and what Christ has done for us. 
and testimonies, right? They are testimonies. Not, it's not our testimony here, is it? They, it is God's testimony to us. God gives us this promise that he's attached to this sign so that we can know, right? We can have this absolute confidence of his will towards us. It's pretty cool, right? God not only says, I love you, I have redeemed you, but then he says, now, I just want you to know this. I want you to be absolutely sure of this, so here's some extra ways that you can receive this. Um, you know, it's like Mother's Day is coming up, and you can say, you know, we appreciate you, Mom. We love you. That's it. That's all we're going to do. You know, you'll probably do something more, right? Because you want to show that by a sign. Um, now, that the, the gift on Mother's Day or the, the meal or whatever, it, it's a sign of that love, right? But in this case, not only is it a sign of God's will towards us, but a delivery system of the grace of Jesus. Okay, so they were instituted. Instituted by whom? By God, by Jesus, right? To awaken and confirm faith in those who use them, right? Awaken and confirm. So to, to get it started, right? And to, what does confirm mean? Strengthen. That's what confirmation is. Confirmation is not um, just a right. You know, we, we take, tend to think of that day as being confirmation. That's the right of confirmation. But really, confirmation is all the stuff that's preceded it. They have been confirmed, strengthened in the faith. And now, they're going to continue to be confirmed and strengthened in the faith after they have been confirmed. Why? Because they're now going to receive another of the sacraments by which they will be confirmed. Okay? Uh, therefore, we must use the sacraments in such a way that faith, which believes the promise is offered and set forth through the sacraments, is increased. Okay? They are gifts by which our faith can be increased. They are not just things that we do, right? They're not just hoops that we jump through. But we use them so that faith can be increased. That's the key there, okay? Uh, so they, uh, they condemn those that teach that the sacraments justify simply by the act of doing them. This is the uh, Roman Catholic, you know, ex opera operata. Uh, you know, that uh, the idea that you, you do the thing and it's done and it's, it doesn't matter um, on the receiving end what you, you know, if there is faith there. Um, in the Lord's Supper, like we talked about last week, does it depend on the faith of the individual that Christ's body and blood are there. No. But if someone receives Christ's body and blood apart from faith, now is that a good thing or a bad thing? That is not a good thing. That is not a good thing. Uh, because now you are receiving with an unbelieving heart and you are rejecting the very one who um, is giving himself there. Um, so faith is necessary for the sacraments to have the positive effect, right? Um, they condemn those who do not teach that faith, that believes that sins are forgiven, is required in the use of the sacraments. So it's not just um, magic potions or mag magic uh, uh, formulas that we use, right? Um Otherwise, if that were the case, man, get me the super soaker and I'm going to go baptize everybody, right? I'm going to go drive around. I'm going to shoot them with the, the super soaker and I'm going to call out the baptismal formula. And I'll say, see, well, God attached his problem. It has to happen. No, because what's not there? There's not faith that is receiving this, right? It's not, <laughs> plus it's just not even being used in the way God has established it to be used, but... Um, okay, so what is a sacrament? From the uh, 1991 uh, 
catechism, the questions and answers part, a sacrament is a sacred act instituted by God in which God himself has joined his word of promise to a visible element and by which he offers, gives, and seals the forgiveness of sins earned by Christ. Anybody learn that in confirmation class? I certainly did. <laughs> right? Uh, visible element connected with God's word instituted by Christ delivers the forgiveness of sins. Those are the things that were kind of hammered home as the, the necessary things. Okay? By this definition, you have two sacraments, right? Baptism and the Lord's Supper, because you have the visible element. Baptism, you have the water. Lord's Supper, you have bread and wine. Okay, You have uh, uh, God has joined his word of promise to that visible element, right? Baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Uh, he who believes and is baptized will be saved. Um, you know, Be baptized and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, on and on and on. Uh, take and eat, this is my body which is given for you, take and drink, this is my blood which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. There you go, joined with the word of promise, okay? By which he offers, gives, and seals the forgiveness of sins earned by Christ. We already said that, right? Okay, so those both fit, no doubt about it. But it's not just quite so simple because the word sacrament doesn't exactly show up in the Bible. Um, but that's okay. The word Trinity doesn't appear in the Bible either. Sometimes we coin words to capture a reality so that we don't have to talk around them all the time, right? Um, so the word sacrament doesn't show up in the Bible, but it, but it kind of does because the word sacrament comes from the Latin Vulgate, uh, in which it translates the word, the Greek word, mystery. For so, First Corinthians, uh, chapter four, you are uh, Paul. Paul says we, meaning him and the the, the other uh, you know, ministers uh, of the word, we are stewards of the mysteries of Christ. Okay, that's in the Latin Vulgate where that word um, sacrament comes from. So this word mystery included all saving truths of the faith, like the Trinity and Incarnation, as well as the Lord's Supper and Holy Baptism. Okay, So mysteries would be those things that are revealed to us, but really hidden just from the, the eyes, hidden from sight. Right. So you watch a baptism take place, and it looks like a kid's getting wet. <laughs> or an adult baptism, and the adult's getting wet. And you can't see that the Holy Spirit is doing something there, that God is actually claiming that person in that way, right? In the Lord's Supper, it looks like you're just eating bread and wine, but it's more than that, and we know it's more than that because that has been revealed to us. Um, when people saw Jesus, right? Isn't this jo just Joseph's son? Well, no. <laughs> uh, only in the adoptive sense was he Joseph's son. But they, with their eyes, what did they see? A very a, a normal looking person. And so um, the hiddenness behind that had to be revealed. Okay, so is, but is absolution a sacrament? Uh, sometimes... We, talk, we say, well, how many sacraments are there? Baptism and Lord's Supper. But in our confessions, it says this. If we call sacraments rites that have been command, the, the command of God and to which the promise of grace has been added, it is easy to decide what are true sacraments. For rites instituted by human beings will not be called true sacraments. For human authority cannot promise grace. Therefore, baptism, the Lord's Supper, and absolution, which is the sacrament of repentance, are truly sacraments. For these rites have God's command and the promise of grace, which is peculiar to the New Testament. Okay. But how about ordination? We also have this in the uh, uh, Apology of the Augsburg Confession. But if ordination is understood as carrying out the ministry of the word, we are willing to call that a call ordination a sacrament. <laughs> so how many sacraments are there? 
Well, we don't really care how many there are. We're not, we're not really about counting them. We're about using them, right? So the definition is man-made anyway. In some way, shape, or form, it's man-made, but behind it is the big reality, right? How does God awaken and confirm faith? That's the key. Does he do that in baptism? Oh, yeah. Lord's Supper? Oh, yeah. Confession and absolution? Yeah. Ordination? Well, he uses that guy to do that, right? So in those senses, uh, the Lutheran confessors were, were just saying, sure, why not? Because we don't care that much about defining sacrament. We care about using these gifts of God in the way God has given them to be used for the sake of awakening and confirming faith. That's the key. Okay, so um, sacraments can be thought of as the visible word. Um, you know, Romans 1, 16, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation for every, to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Uh, and Augustine uh, is quoted here in the Apology. It has been well said by Augustine that a sacrament is a visible word because the right is received by the eyes and is, as it were, a picture of the word, illustrating the same thing as the word. The result of both is the same. So sometimes people want to say, well, see, you're... you're you're adding to the word of God. Or, you know, we see it, it says in Romans, right, that the gospel is the power of God. Yeah, sacraments are gospel. Well, faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Yeah, yeah. And where's the power in the sacraments? <laughs> in the word of God. Um, so we don't divide these things because they're not divisible. The sacraments are the visible word. God attaches his promises to these things, and then when we use them as he says in the way he has commanded, he does what he says he was going to do. Okay, so it's, it's, it might be helpful for us to think of the sacraments as the visible words of God. Okay, this is one I've, I've shown before, right? The sacraments are God's delivery system, the grace delivery system. And again, we don't just call up Am or, or you know uh, go to go to Amazon and click you know buy this book and have it appear unless it's a Kindle book, right? <laughs> Even then, though, there's got to be a delivery system of some way, shape, or form, right? You have to use your Wi-Fi or the the internet uh, um, you know lines that that you have going. Um, there's got to be a delivery system of some way in some way. So. The, 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 what Jesus did for us on Calvary and by his resurrection, how does it get to us? Through the word and through the sacraments. That's the grace delivery system, right? If you have a, a garden, you need to get water to your garden, you have a water delivery system, better known as a hose. <laughs> but you got to get it there in some way, right? Well, God has established, here's how I'm going to do it. Okay, so again, the sacraments are the grace of God delivered by means, received by faith, and it delivers salvation. Okay, so the means of grace are the ways that God brings the benefits of what Jesus did on the cross and at the tomb into the lives of individuals throughout history. Okay, so again, we've, we've seen this one before, but there is a difference in understanding here. Sacramental versus ornamental. So we understand God's grace is actually given, actually delivered through the sacraments versus what we see in the Radical Reformation and that ends up being you know, Baptist, non-denominational, um, and some other 
um, groups like that where they, they see, no, you get God's grace directly somehow. But there's not, you know, it's, it's, it's delivered somehow. And then baptism and communion are ways that we show a remembrance of, of those things or we participate in thinking about, um, you know, what God has done for us. Okay, so that's what sacramental theology is. What difference does it actually make? Okay, without us even going any further, are there thoughts you might have? Yeah, it, one of the things it does is it gets you out of your head. Um, because it's not just a cognitive thinking about, but it's actually a participation in. Um, well, it's given to us rather than us doing it. It's done to us. Sure, yeah. What's that? Change of focus. Change of focus, yeah. Okay, elaborate. Well, I mean, Tendency, I mean, as you just call it, ornamental. Right, ornamental, yeah. I mean, would be the reverse of that, right? The focus is more on what we're doing. Yeah. Than what God's doing. Yeah, and, and so where do you look to know, do, do, I, do I believe? You look to you. You look inside and you start searching around and it's, a, it's, it's this vicious circle. Um, versus... Well, Christ has said this right here. He has, give, is giving this to me. I can just, I can believe him and believe what he has said he's going to do for me and give to me in the sacraments. Um, and so, yeah, it, it gets your focus out of you onto Christ in the means by which he comes to us. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what difference does it make in worship? What primarily, what is the main thing that happens in worship? We receive. receive. He gives, right? We show up, he gives us gifts. He delivers his forgiveness to us. Uh, we remember our baptism, right? We remember that we have been baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We receive absolution. We hear the word of God, trusting that the Holy Spirit is at work through that. We receive the Lord's Supper. Jesus comes to us, forgives our sins, strengthens our faith, right? It, it's primarily, what are we doing? We're there to receive. Now, there is the other element that we respond, right? We do praise we do pray. We do give glory to God. Absolutely. Because he continues to, you know, deliver these things to us. How can you not? It's going gonna, it's gonna to result from that. Um, so also, okay, what's the main focus of what happens in worship? In, in, in some churches you have... Okay, we're going to sing these songs and get you kind of ramped up for, uh, for it so that you can kind of feel it. And then we're going to have um, a long uh, talk, right? A long sermon, a long uh, message. And then we're going to have some, some more singing. And that's kind of the main thing. Um, what's the main thing? Well, yeah. For, and for us, what do we, what's the main thing? We come and we confess. We receive forgiveness. We hear the word of God, right? We hear the word preached, no doubt, and applied. But then we get to the, the Lord's Supper, right? And it's, again, gift coming to us. And so uh, it shapes how we worship, doesn't it? Our theology is shaped by how we worship, and our theology shapes how we worship, right? Right? Why is it that our service is ordered in that way? Well, because of our theology. <laughs> and then that reinforces our theology as we practice that. Um, so, yeah, it's going to change quite a bit 
uh, of the, the focus there. Okay, certainty. Certainty, and Rick kind of alluded to this, right? Where do I look to know I am in the faith? Right, you can go, oh, I can, I, I'm baptized, right? You can go to the word of God, and you can also say, see, these are the, these are the promises, and they're for me. And you can go to the, the Lord's Supper, and you can say, man, I'm a miserable sinner, but Jesus... He came to me anyway. He forgives my sins. Uh, what a gift, right? I look for certainty to Christ in the ways he has said he will come. Um, without sacramental theology, where do you look for certainty? Yeah. What people end up often doing is they look at their works. That, that, they're also looking, I think, at their feelings, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So you get, you end up, you end up, in, okay, uh, you end up either going, well, I know I'm saved because I'm doing all of these good things, okay, and and works should be there, no question about it. And if their works aren't there, there's a big problem, and. We need to, we need, you know, this is part of the church, right? We need to confront you and talk to you about this because that's not okay and you are in danger, right? But works, works can be a, a sign of not being in the faith, but they can't be a confirmation that you are in the faith. That you can't just point to the works and go, but I did a lot of good stuff. Okay, well, so did the, uh, you know, the, the, the Buddhist down the road, or the, the Hindu down the road, right? Did a lot of nice things for a lot of people. But that's not how we're going to be saved. Um, or you end up looking at feelings, right? Do I feel close to God? And sometimes you do. And man, sometimes you don't. I mean, if you've ever been through a, a spell where you just... You feel God is distant, right? I think everybody can understand that feeling. And it's miserable. So where do you look? Well, if you don't have a way that you can say, I know God has attached his promise to this. I know he's right here for me. Then what you end up doing is you end up trying to do something to conjure up the feeling. Instead of, going to what is the what is the promise right what has god said right so i can go to okay i am feeling distant from the lord but i'm baptized i'm feeling really i'm just struggling but jesus has promised he's here for me in the lord's supper right man i am just torn up by this sin The pastor that God has given me has just said, your sins are forgiven. They are. So we, we have this certainty of where we can look, um, which is just so comforting. Okay? Where is God for me? This is one of the gifts of, of sacramental theology. We know where he is for us, right? God is omnipresent. But he is only present for you in certain places where he has made that promise. Um, you know, water is all around us right now, right? There's vapor in the air. Try, try drinking that in. <laughs> it's not going to do you any good. God is everywhere, but you need him to be present in such a way that you can receive him. And that's what he does in the sacraments. All right, participation. And I have a couple things in mind with this. First is, is again, the Christian life sometimes, and, and, and Lutherans can definitely do this. This is not, um, this is something we need to work on sometimes. We, we can make it so cognitive that it, we, we forget there's actually this living out of it. But the sacraments are a living out thing. 
They are a bodily participation in a thing. Um, and so there is more than just thinking about, there is doing, there is receiving, there is that tangible thing. Um, God, God loves to work in tangible ways, doesn't he? If we think, think about the Old Testament, what are some things or where, where, where are some times that we see God work in a tangible way, a way that you could touch, participate in? Well, okay, the Ten Commandments were not just spoken, they were actually written on tablets of stone, correct? Here's this tangible thing. God presence among them. He didn't just say, look, I did all of this for you. You don't need a visible representation of me being among you. You should know it by now. No, he, he first has the pillar of cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. Then you have the Ark of the Covenant and the Holy of Holies and the, the, uh, the cloud that is there uh, amongst that. So he has this visible reality. Sacrifices. I mean, you want to talk about getting your hands dirty. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Uh, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. What happens? You literally have blood sprinkled on you. And you buy that No, I'm covered, right? What do we have in the New Testament? Here is my body. Here is my blood given for you tangible way i know i'm part of the covenant i've received this i participated in this uh baptism is a visible tangible thing um here is a pastor speaking these words to me so he gives us these different ways so that we are we're, we're not just um we're not just bumps on a log sitting in the pews, right? Well, we got to be here and kind of go through the motions and God's going to do what he's going to do. No, we're, we're, we're participating in it, right? Yep. So miracles in scripture too, wouldn't those yeah. be tangible? Yeah, think about some of the, some of the healings that Jesus does. I, I, you know, the one where he, he spits in the ground and makes, uh, makes spittle, it says, and puts that on the guy's eyes. And we go, ew. But this is a visible, a tangible thing, right? By which he brings about that healing. Now, does he need that? No, because there's other times. What is he? He has the, uh, the guy comes to him. My daughter needs your help. Okay, go home. Your daughter will be well. By his word. By the power of his word. That's all that's, all that's needed, right? Your sins are forgiven. We hear those words. Cool. Awesome. And he delivers it when, we, when it is given, right? But God is so wonderful, he doesn't say, well, that's enough for you. <laughs> I'm going to pile on with other ways that you can know your sins are forgiven, that you can know you're connected to Jesus, that you can know I've received these gifts. So it, it's, a, it's a wonderful participation that we have where we're not just kind of, uh, we're not only kind of there cognitively, but we're in it. We're included. We have a place in it. Okay, so sacramental theology is often one of the, uh, the most difficult hurdle for Western thinkers and for those coming from Baptist or non-denominational backgrounds. Why do you think it's tough for Western thinkers? Yeah, we are so stuck in scientific ways of thinking that to think that this this matter, right? The it's a bunch of particles, and God is there. He, yeah, <laughs> but it violates our way of thinking, doesn't it? Because it sounds magical. It sounds mystical. Well. There is more to this world than what we can see and what we can measure. There are realities that are greater. Uh, but it's challenging for us in that way. 
Also, non-denominational background, Baptist background, why is it such a struggle? Because they have been immersed in a system that tells them baptism is only a sign. The Lord's Supper is only a sign. And anybody that tries to tell you that, uh, that you know, these things actually do things, well, you got to be skeptical of that. Um, I have had these conversations again and again and again with people. Um, and it's hard because the whole system is kind of different. Uh, and those who have, who have kind of had that background um, usually early on struggle with it. And then once, they, once it clicks, they love it. <laughs> they love it because they realize how everything in Scripture now clicks. Everything fits. Uh, but this is something to keep in mind, um, that, that it will be a struggle for a lot of folks. Um, but we should remember our, our sacramental theology is comforting, and it's a gift from God. Okay. Uh, I just wanted to, to reiterate again the, what we have in, in the Article 13. Okay. The sacraments were instituted to awaken and confirm faith in those who use them. Therefore, we must use the sacraments in such a way in which faith, which believes the promises offered and set forth in the sacraments, is increased. That's the main thing, right? Confirm and awaken. Confirm and awaken. Um, all right. Comments, questions, thoughts? Anything? Yes. So, um really pretty clear about the definition of sacraments for us. Um, you know, in the Catholic Church, obviously, you know, the seven sacraments, and you know, I mean, there's, it seems it must be a you know, significantly different definition. What is their definition of the sacraments? That's a good question. I don't know that they have a, an official definition, um, but they have an official list. Yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the number seven was a big thing in medieval times, and so you end up with trying to divide everything into sevens. You know, so you have these seven deadly sins, and you have uh, seven petitions for the Lord's Prayer, and you have seven um, sacraments, and and so you know everything kind of goes. You know, it's got to it's got to go fit into that. Well, um, uh, yeah, it, it it again, I think. Ultimately, the difference goes back to justification. Um, how are we made right with God, right? How are we justified? And we believe what? Go back to Article 4, right? Our churches teach that we are, what? Saved by grace through faith, right? Um, here, I'll, uh, our churches teach that people cannot be justified before God by their own strength, merit, or works. People are ju freely justified for Christ's sake, through faith when they believe that they are received into favor and that their sins are forgiven for Christ's sake. By his death, Christ made satisfaction for our sins. God counts this for righteousness in his sight. Okay, now, when you work with that definition, then the sacraments flow out of that. Okay, um, so this is the, the, the foundation the sacraments are the means by which this justification gets delivered. Versus with the Roman Catholic understanding, what are the sacraments going to be? A means by which we receive merit. A means by which we receive merit because we get this infusion of grace. But justification requires that we then participate in doing good works, that we add our own merits, and um, you know, participation in the sacraments is a means by which those merits can be increased, by which we can add to our own kind of you know, war chest of, of trying to get into heaven. Um, so that, that's kind of the key. It goes back to justification. And when you work with different uh, understanding, understandings of that, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get into everything else, right? What do 
pastors exist to do or priests exist to do. That's going to flow out of the understanding of justification. What are the sacraments there to be? Uh, it, it goes back to justification. Um, and so for, for them, that's kind of the, the main thing is it's a means by which we receive merit because Christ has done his saving work, but we have to uh, merit our own on top of that. Okay. Other thoughts, comments, questions? Okay. I'll actually go back to Article 12 next week, which we skipped apparently. Uh, <laughs> because I really like sacraments and I don't like repentance. No. <laughs> You can't have sacraments if repentant faith isn't there. So um, it's probably not great that I went out of order because it really does kind of flow. Um, but we'll go back to repentance next week. Let's close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight to uh, think about the way in which you work in this world in tangible, physical ways, delivering to us the saving work of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, that you come to us in these ways and you awaken and you confirm faith in us. Uh, help us to, to find comfort in that and to know uh, that your promises are always true uh, so that when we are struggling, when we are doubting, we know where to look, where you have promised to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.